Welcome to Women Awakening. I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. We are all about changing this world one woman at a time, changing this planet one woman at a time. And I get the honor of introducing you to amazing women, inspiring women, motivated women, successful women. And so my guest today is not someone that I've had a lot of time with, but her her reputation precedes her. So let me just tell you who she is. Kim Stanwood. Terra Nova, a woman of passionate power who assists individuals with experiencing true inner greatness and unlimited authentic joy. She has been dubbed the chiropractor of the mind and the master teacher of intentional living. Kim holds a license as a practitioner of truth from the Agape International Spiritual Center in Los Angeles, and she has also earned a bachelor's degree in spiritual studies. For over three decades, she has immersed herself in the application and practice of universal spiritual truth and wisdom. She is the author of The Technology of Intention. Kim, welcome. I love watching you say that. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for (laughs) your presence. Well, I, I, I want the women to know about you. So first of all, talk about how you got to where you are. I mean, you're a master coach and a leader, a a thought leader, you know, I mean, how did you grow up and and what led you down this path? I I got here by listening to God at all times. (laughs) So, but my beginning path was not that way. When I was a child, we didn't go to a spiritual center or anywhere. So I found that I was always seeking. My mother um, had said to me, you get to choose. So I'm not, I'm not deciding that for you. You get to choose. So I was always seeking and having mystical experiences that I couldn't quite understand, but knew there was more occurring than I can see with my outer eye. So I feel like that was an intention and a prayer years ago when I was a child to know more, to be shown. And just in that willingness to, I'm I'm here and willing and open to see what's possible in life and to have direct connection to that power and presence that willingness opened the key for me to keep following, listening, following, listening, following to get me right here. And it wasn't always easy. It was definitely some massive bumps, but it was the tools of my connection to spirit that helped me get, you know, over the bumps to get right here. I love that. You know, so I want, I want to talk about trusting that knowing because a lot of women feel like, I have a calling. They feel like something powerful is happening. And yet they're, I don't know if I can trust that. I, I, I don't know if that's really a calling or if it's just my mind taking me down some track. You know, how did you get to the place where you could listen and know so powerfully? I fell a lot. <laughs> and then I got back up and thought, okay, I, was that me or is that the source? And it's the practice of our spiritual practices, if people want to call them self-care practices, the practice is what got me to know and have discernment. You know, there's always the ability to, my intention is to master discernment so that I can really, really listen to, oh, spirit's talking now and that's, that's not me and I need to follow that. And then we, we practice and know that I can practice a little and listen again, be grateful, set my intention, apply again. It's just an ongoing evolution of our soul. And in that we do fall, but it's how, you know, not quickly for speed, but how can we lovingly get back up, brush ourselves off and build a field of trust? Because that's a muscle to build. I didn't always have it, but I had an intention. You know, when, when, it, when it got hardest in my life, I thought, what's my intention now? And it was to stand in unstoppable faith. That was my intention for two solid years every day. I didn't know how. I couldn't understand how solutions were going to come forward. I needed to move the how out. And I just kept building that. I'm in unstoppable faith, unstoppable faith. Guide me now to show me. And over time, the intention, listening, and applying started to build up a foundation that it was the norm. But it wasn't at first. So I tell women, we have to, that listening, cultivate deep listening to our inner voice, to spirit, 
to who's ever before us and keep honoring that in practicing and moving forward. But it's definitely a muscle. I love that. And so is that part of the technology of intention that you're speaking of? Absolutely. Absolutely. Talk about that. Talk about that and, and how the book got written and 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 um, how we can use it. Yes. Yes. I know that we all have within the spiritual technology. And I know that we're looking out into the world, blessed by the technology of the world. And I never want us to forget that within our souls, each and every one of us have a technology of inner gut. We have our own inner guidance system. If we can balance mastering our inner guidance, spiritual technology with the technology of the world, we're living in a balanced society, which is one of my biggest intentions to assist people to do that. So the technology of an intention is a roadmap. Because they kept coming, intentions kept coming through me. So people would say, what's an intention? And I'd close my eyes and spirit would download an intention. And I thought, but I want everyone to be able to do this. So when I listened and spirit said, then get to creating it, put it on paper so that I could hand it to someone and say, if I'm not sitting next to you, here's a pathway, a roadmap to practice, to build the muscle of listening to your own inner technology and Mm -hmm. applying intentions we're creating consciously or unconsciously every given moment of our lives. The technology of intention gives us the tools to create consciously what we desire instead of slipping into unconscious behavior. So it's vitally important for us, for us to activate that technology and keep living it. So, so give me some tips on activating that technology. Well, you know, because here's the thing, it's like, we can sit and we can listen to people. It's like, okay, but, but some of us who are a little more linear, it's like, what are some steps so I know what to do? Absolutely. So intentions, which is, we're all being asked, what's your intention all the time? I want us to really look at intentions are lasered statements that are very clear and powerful. And we're placing on the altar of spirit, our desires. So when we know I have the power to create this statement, when we come back to ourselves and say, what is it I wish for today? Let's say today. What if we had a full work day? I would say, what do you wish for today? Go to the qualities of what you wish to create. So whether it's ease, flow, divine communication, connection with whomever is before me, those are fabulous qualities. So if we say, what do I wish to desire? So my intention then has to also be kept in the present moment, And in the positive. So then we go, my intention in this moment is to be in divine communication who all across my path to move and flow and ease and grace and complete everything on my list with ease and in divinity. It's a great intention. And see when, but how I stepped us into that is what is it you desire to experience, whether it's in this meeting, in this relationship, in your body temple, what do you wish to experience When we ask ourselves that, we don't usually go to a number or a date and time. We go to a quality of being. I want to be free, healthy, whole, and and really knowing that I'm listening, cultivating that inner wisdom. Our intentions are based on those qualities because spirit takes those and is assisting us to manifest them versus if we don't have them, we're unconsciously in expectation. You walk into a room going, well, everybody shows up on time. This meeting will go well. It's an expectation. We're going to be disappointed versus what's my intention to be present in this meeting and accept that all unfolds for the highest order. So did you catch the presence in the positive and based in qualities? When we do that, we have an ability to then put it out into the universe. Like this is what my intention is. Then we're yeah. with the unlimited source. Yeah. So we're living in a very interesting time on this planet. <laughs> There's a lot of people are stressed, they're quarantined, or they're they're feeling like they're constricted. And and so staying in the present moment, mm-hmm. you know, is difficult. I mean, you you talked about there have being some bumps in your road, you know, and I know in my life, you know, it, relationships have been a um a way of learning for me. And so a lot of times when I've hit those walls, you know, it's been very difficult for me to stay in the moment because it's so easy to be pulled into the past 
or projecting into the future out of a fear place. So can we talk about that a little bit? Oh, yes. The power is always, always in the present moment. We cannot breathe the breath we're going to do tomorrow or the one we had yesterday. So if we come back to, wait a minute, this is my place of power right here and right now then we can activate tools within that keep us in the present moment. So say in this world that is scary right now and it's full and it's challenging. I'll say to people of all times in human history right now is the most important for us to stay alert and present to what's going on within us so that we are being the light in the world and not standing in the fear that we bring the light to every situation. It's not easy. But we have tools. And so even that knowing my intention is to stay present today, present today, brings us into this present moment to activate what's possible now. We walk into something that feels fearful. What do I wish to feel? Calm, centered, divine, whole. My intention is to stay present, calm, centered, divine, whole, and see the truth in the midst of other conversations. It is imperative that we stand as a beautiful powerhouse of women rising up to we're holding the light in the midst of intensity so that not only each of us remembers who we are in the presence of one another but we assist others we can't do that if we're still in the past or fearing the future to to alter the future we get to be present to who am i today am i standing in faith in the midst of a fearful life right now and then what tools do i activate to keep me in faith so we don't just have, just throw it out like, I'll be faithful today. It's what is the action be for this intention to be fulfilled? So that even the questions we're asking right now, Cindy, are keeping us in the present moment. You and I aren't thinking about tomorrow or yesterday because we're listening and asking questions that activate answers that can only be answered now. So this exchange is a perfect example of we're totally present because we don't want to be anywhere else but right here. That's what we get to do every moment. We have the opportunity and it requires being awake. If we're asleep and, oh no, guess what happened yesterday? What am I going to do about that? We just went out of power. So again, I'm not saying this is easy. I'm saying it's necessary, important, and completely possible when we're activating our spiritual technology, tools, meditation, prayer, intention. What is What tool do I bring to this moment to keep me present? It's a great question. Instead of, why is this happening? Ask a bigger question. What tool do I bring to this moment? Every question will bring us spirits answering, answering, answering. So we get to be conscious of what we're asking. Right. Incredible. So you have been a part of the Agape International Spiritual Center. You know, I grew up there, did a lot of my training there. I want to talk about the power of community because I'm very intentional and um, passionate about bringing women into community. And so talk to, talk to us about the power of being in community with like-minded people. I just got chills. I get weepy when you say that because I, I see in pictures and I see the different events in my life where I got to lean in to my community that, that lifted me. Um, there's so many recently um, I lost my home in my retreat center, wherever Michael had been taught at, due to the California, Southern California fires. A year and a half ago, came roaring through. And in one night, I was teaching, and the next day, everything's gone. Everything I've ever had is gone, physically. And in a moment like that, how I moved through it was with the power of loved ones that I can make a call, send a text and say, please pray for me now, hold me now, because I don't know where I'm going to live. I don't know how I'm going to get clothes for my children. I have no idea where I'm going to teach. But I knew that I had a community that I couldn't, I didn't even see them all, but I could reach out. And whether it's Reverend Michael, Reverend Kathleen was going to span that fast to this just occurred in Kimberly's life and keep her prayed up now. So that... Someone, spirit, and my community is holding my family in vigil to move through a very difficult situation. And when we remember, we're not in this alone. This is what we do as practitioners and ministers, you know, is we're holding people energetically. I just finished off of another client, a phone call with clients now that I will be praying for all day, every day. It's not, a, it's not hard. It's part of a daily prayer. It's a thought of knowing the truth for that one when they cannot remember. And that is palpable 
beautiful unification that shifts our lives. And we have the power to do that in the world. But our community holds us. So I encourage people, whether we could do it online like this, we could do it in the room, but to connect with souls that know who you are when you forget until you remember again. That's what we get to do for each other is always, I'm going to hold you gently and know the truth so that you can come back to your center. So that that original question of how do we stay, build faith and trust is we also do it that way. We reach out to like-minded souls that have the same languaging as we do and say, could you hold me now? I need help. And when they say, absolutely, it's not a duty. It's an honor. It's an honor to pray for someone. I love that. You know, it's like there are moments where you have to lean into someone else's consciousness to lift you until you can get back into your own center and alignment, you know? goodness we can that we know that i can be praying for you and knowing the truth and you're going to feel something no matter where you are and that's a gift that i wanted to keep growing that one you know i know that we could i pray for people across the world when i'm doing my prayers and if there's an earthquake or something's occurring across the world i'm going there energetically and saying hang on help is coming i'm right here i'm right here i'm talking to you i'm with you so that we can we have it's all energy. We're all energetic beings. We think we're separate when we look at our structures or cities. We're not, you know, it's so awesome. So I, I want people to know how to find you. <laughs> so, yeah. so tell us, tell us how to find you and learn more about your incredible work. Um, yeah. You. So um, you can purchase my book, the technology of intention on Amazon. I'd love that. And there's lots of tools there, but you also go to my website, which is kimstanwoodterranova.com. Sign up because I have a a newsletter that I let people know where I'm speaking, what city I'm at, what things are in Zoom, as well as my social media is um, Kim Stanwood on Instagram and on Facebook as well. Great. Okay, everybody, uh, pay attention. Get this book, The Technology of Intention on Amazon. I ask uh, every guest the same last question. What is the one thing you want every woman to know? What is that one important thing that you want to impart? That they are absolutely powerful beyond measure and that there's a strength within them that is so palpable, so beautiful, that when they go within to catch it, and they simply don't have to do anything. Their essence is unlimited and beautiful. And I encourage them to keep building that light within because I see it, you see it. And I want them to remember it, to remember how powerful they are, to remember how beautiful they are and to not forget by the circumstances of life that does not determine their beauty and power in their inner light determines that. So keep going within and seeking that and allowing it to shine. Oh, Kim, thank you so much. So honored to walk this path with you, to get to know you better, to introduce you to women that are in deep need, I'm sure, of your gifts and your wisdom. I can't wait to hug you in person sometime. (laughs) Me too. So ladies, come back often. We are putting up um, new podcasts uh, every other week. Um, And also, um, please remember that you are magnificent, you're powerful, you're here to shine your light. The world would be have a hole if you weren't here in this moment. You are essential. I'm so grateful to be with you. I look forward to being with you next time. Bye.